there isn't a right or a wrong way to have a filing system, but there is a useful way. Oh my goodness, it's like emotions. Happy is is neither a positive nor a negative emotion. It's an emotion. And is feeling happy useful for me now? It's the same sort of thing. The question is, is it useful? Is it serving you for who you are at this moment in time in this current chapter? This is Life Work with Maya, where we talk about success on your terms and tune in to work and lives that feel spacious, abundant and aligned with who we truly are. So I've got Caroline back for our third episode together and sadly our final one. I'm sure we could go on and on about this topic, but we thought it would be fun to get super practical. And as a decluttering devotee in my own way, I have some specific areas that I feel are like repeated issues that I wanted to bring to Caroline today. So hi, Caroline. Hello. Nice to be back. Thank you. (laughs) I've got a few specific questions. So one of them is a daily habit that I just see kind of not, I'm not able to get past. And it's like this little clothes pile behind the door. So it's just the way it is. And I feel like I've always had this thing about if something's not quite ready for the wash yet, or it's in between. And I just get this little pile of clothes. And I just wondered if you had any thoughts, because I'm better with the inside stuff. Like I'm better with like the inside of my cupboards are clean and tidy because I've been decluttering over the years, but it's that kind of daily mess that I want to improve on. And I was wondering if you had any um, thoughts about ways of dealing with that. It's, it's interesting because the first question I want to ask you is, what's wrong with having a clothes pile? A great question. I mean, it's first of all, it's kind of on the floor because it doesn't have a proper thing to go into. So it's just mm. behind the door and sort of on the floor. Um, it looks a bit messy. It makes the door hard to shut. And mm-hmm. I just think, it doesn't feel in keeping with what you're describing about, you know, kind of like a nice, serene bedroom. Or... Well, I, th- I think it's really important to remember that we're not looking, well, me personally, slick isn't isn't necessarily, what, what unless you want slick or you want perfect, then let's accept that that's never going to happen. You, you, owning a home is like painting the fourth bridge. You, you, it's an ongoing process. It sounds to me as though you're saying, I don't know if this is right, that it's the fact that the pile is on the floor and the door won't open and that it looks unsightly that offends you. And it also sounds like these are clothes that you don't want to put away in the tidy wardrobe because they're worn a little bit and everything. Is there somewhere else in your bedroom that you could fold them neatly and place them or drape them so that they didn't offend, so that they were easier on your eye even? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that I'm a big fan of hooks and we already have some hooks. Sometimes they get overloaded and we do also have like a, just an occasional chair, which then sometimes becomes the receptacle for these things, you know? And I think it's what the nicest bit of what you've said, or the most freeing part is saying, actually, is this really an issue? I mean, it gets dealt with eventually. I'm not convinced it's an issue, but what I've noticed is whatever I do almost just moves the problem around. So at one point I had a little pop, like a little drawer on the floor of my cupboard that became the place for the stuff that then just grew unmanageably because it was sort of out of sight out of mind there is an element of that thing of you know if it's not visible to you then you just kind of forget about it and I know Mm. that that's a part of certain like thinking patterns you know Mm. if something's not visible to you um so I've kind of moved the problem around a bit I feel like it's more in my behavior of like before it touches the ground I almost feel like I should but I could do something better with it that could actually break the cycle. And that would be better than trying to move the problem around the room. Do you know what I mean? I love the correction from <laughs> I should. Because I've listened to, to your I podcast. It, 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 <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it is. It's the first word to notice because there is no it was should. The word should, by the way, for the listeners, if you, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> she said should. There is no should about any of this. It, it's about you and should is such a punitive word. And you beautifully corrected yourself to, to <laughs> you, you were talking about coulding. And I don't know, to be honest with you, I'm a little bit stumped about this one because I'm thinking my job is to look at life through your eyes. And I'm still not convinced 
there's a bit of me that if if we had more time, I would want to probe into, is this really a problem, this specific pile about where the, whether it's a chair drobe, a drawer, a pile on a hook, or is it, or is it that, is it the accumulation of it that's a problem? And could you benefit from a lot of people use the, the people who were lucky enough to be able to employ, say, a cleaner can use that as almost as an accountability thing, like, oh, the cleaner's coming, so I'm going to f- put away everything that's in the chair drobe or pick up the stuff chair that's drobe. on the floor because I don't want, well, there's, we also have the floor drobe, but we don't want the cleaner to be wasting his or her time picking up after me. We want them to be able to do their job. Um, but or is there a is there a system in the family after your beautiful family meetings about you know every Monday or Sunday night we have a bit of a tidy up and we make sure that we enter the week in a beautiful way and that means that I do have to go through the the drawer where I'm keeping my not quite finished and ready for the laundry clothes and I have a good sort and make sure it's not over accumulating is that helpful? I it. it is. It's super helpful. It's also making me think that there is something bigger here, which is then it does feed into my daily, you know, I then will like turn up at the gym in like mismatched and like rubbish, rubbish clothing. And so it also then feeds into a lack of knowing what's going on on that front. So it, mm. there, there is something, there is a lack of awareness in that. And it's like, it's very freeing for me. Like, I love the fact that I don't have to officially get, like I used to hate having to get smart casual dressed up for the office like it was like I hated it and so I'm much more free now and that code was a weird dress code the point Mm. is I feel so much more free now and I'm the kind of person that I don't I don't really want to have to think about what I'm wearing I'm I'm like I'm all in my head and I'm just like that that's how I am at least in the mornings or in certain parts of my day so which is why you know your conversations around clothes are so fascinating to me Mm. but I think it all feeds into a lack of then the whole thing doesn't work very well together so I think there's something a bit bigger there that I need Mm -hmm. to figure out and actually by intentionally putting that item away at the time or putting it in its place to be used again in a better way I think I could have a better cycle then of the way I then wear these clothes and things. Mm. And if it's gym clothes that are, are bothering you in particular, yes, is, it is, is there a different place that gym go- clothes can go? Could you keep them by the toilet so that you put them on as you have your first wee of the morning and are ready in a coordinated outfit to go to the gym? Or, you, you know, what time of day do you want these clothes to be available for you? What, what, it's always in that, that rush time and motion stuff in factories and things like that. I think we're talking about that. You know, how many how many movements do you want to make in order to grab hold of this item? Yeah, the absolute bare minimum because I do my deep work and then I like throw myself out of the house on a walk run or something. Mm. And so I'm just like not wanting to even think about that stuff. And that and that's the thing, but then I can see that it then adds up to me, like I said, I'll like suddenly I'll realize I'm amongst people and I'll, and, and that's when I, I'm like, oh gosh, a little bit more awareness, Maya would have helped. And so, but the thing for me is finding the point in the day that is conducive to this process. Cause first thing in the morning isn't, I've got my focus on other things. Evening I'm tired. So I need to find the good point. And I think I know when that point is, it's when if and when I'm getting kids ready for bed, there's time upstairs of just faffing around. And that's, I think it fits into a bedtime routine. Mm, nice. It fits into a bedtime routine and that's when you yeah. can do it. Amazing. That is brilliant. I've got another one. I wanted to let you know about my masterclass. It's around the corner on the 16th of March, which is a Thursday and it's at 12.30 p.m. UK lunchtime. I do hope it will work for my international listeners as well, even if it's kind of one of the first things you do in the morning or a bit later in the evening. I know I've got some amazing international listeners in places like Nepal and Slovakia and Canada. So do keep listening and I really hope you're able to attend this as well. And really, you know, in this podcast, we talk about all the themes that come up with my clients and I know are important to them because I want to be able to support you in your thinking, feeling and actions when it comes to life work and success on your own terms. But what do clients come to me for? 
they come with very specific goals around wanting to take their careers to the next level. They want to get paid more in work that feels really aligned with who they are, in work that truly excites them without having to sell their soul, burn out, work 14 hour days. And this is the stuff I'm going to be talking through in my masterclass. I have a simple method for this. And simple doesn't mean that it was just sort of developed overnight. It has, it's been years in the making with published research behind it, quite rigorous stuff that it was, you know, had to jump through a number of hoops. So it's really properly validated stuff based on hundreds of leaders in financial institutions and who have trained at LBS. It's also based on my experience directly coaching clients, hundreds of leaders that I've coached over the years, which is why I'm now accredited at master level with one of the top three coaching professional coaching bodies. Um, and finally, it's based on my career experience. I do increasingly get asked by clients about my own way of doing things. I wouldn't say I took the typical path on a number of things. And this stuff also plays into my method. So this is what I'm going to talk through on that day. I shared it early last week and I was surprised to get a really quick number of signups and I am keeping this intimate. It is a private masterclass so I want to keep it feeling uh, intimate and like a real masterclass. So if you are interested, don't hesitate, get yourself registered and then if you do register, do honor that place because I will be capping numbers and so I wouldn't want somebody to take that place that could have gone to somebody else. I look forward to speaking with you in a different format in that masterclass. This is about digital clutter, right? Mm. So we now have so many photos, for example, you Mm. know, stuck on our phones and things. And I was wondering if you have a view on digital clutter. You know, do you, first of all, do you enter that in with, with clients or are you cognizant of it just because of the things that are important to you? Within the professional organizing industry, digital clutter is becoming more and more of a thing and in fact there's um, a whole association devoted to professional organizers who work with clients on their digital photographs. I have colleagues who focus quite substantially on digital decluttering with clients which might involve them you know sitting with the client and setting up systems that work for them better on their tech devices, phones, laptops, etc. But also helping them to, it's the same process, helping them to identify what is treasure in terms of a digital document, image, whatever, what is clutter, what is needed, what is not needed. And that whole thing about where am I going to look for it in 10 years time? Where am I going to look for this photograph? You know, is it worth me going through a process of labeling things? What kind of filing system is going to work for you? How are you going to go about that process of retrieval? Is it to do with a particular kind of category or is it to do with date? I've even read about people who've used filing systems that are, are to do to do with their bodies you know that th- this kind of thing is a heart thing this is a head thing this is a foot thing they would use that as a system for for filing their documents um, wow yeah wow. yeah and and the thing is i think i think again there isn't a right or a wrong way to have a filing system but there is a useful way Oh my goodness, it's like emotions. Happy is is neither a positive nor a negative emotion. It's an emotion and is feeling happy useful for me now? It's the same sort of thing. The question is, is it useful? Is it serving you for who you are at this moment in time in this current chapter? And where are you going to look for it in 10 years time? Okay, that's a great question. Where are you going to look for it in 10 years time? And that's what I would love to just get a tiniest bit of resolution with you on because I've got these two things. One is my journals. So I've got mm-hmm. loads of journals. Oh, you can't quite see them over time. And I've they, they survive every declutter because mm-hmm. in my head, they contain bits, they contain words that I've written about the kids sometimes and things like that. So I'm not really quite ready to let them go. And they might just, just they bother me because I feel like they're always there, but I'm not ready to let them go. And that's fine. Photos, I I just feel like 
I've got this idea in my head that in this final analysis, right, so it'd be some point when I'm older and I'm not busy and I'll suddenly look around and be like, where's all my albums and where's all my relics? And, you know, and I'm just going to have this moment, this kind of comeuppance. And I feel this pressure that I need that to be (laughs) like set up for, you know, for that moment. And it bothers me. And I see these photos just accumulating like on our systems, you know, and videos and stuff not really being that well organized about kids and things like that. And I just think in that comeuppance, I'm going to be like, well, why didn't I do X and why didn't I do Y? And I, yeah, it just bothers me. And I don't have a kind of a process and a system yet that I feel like is, is working completely for me yet. And I just, yeah, wondering if you had any thoughts about that. (laughs) You know how I said I don't like to give advice? Yeah. My advice is with anything digital, <laughs> yeah. if ever there's a sense of, I don't need this, that's a do it now, deal with it now, get it, re- get rid of it straight away. That's like an empty envelope, which has yeah. got a valuable letter in it, you know, get rid of the envelope and keep the letter unless you need, unless the envelope is part of the nuance of the letter, obviously. It was interesting how I started to feel overwhelmed as you were talking. And what you reminded you reminded me of, um, I don't know if you've heard of Swedish death cleaning, which is... Um, I have. I have. Oh, yeah. she is amazing. And, and this is this whole thing about our final chapter. You, you, you know, when we're in our final chapter, do we want to feel encumbered by possessions, digital or, 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 or material? Probably not. And also when we die, do we want our children, friends to be rummaging through them? No, maybe not. Or maybe we do. I don't know. There isn't a right or a wrong answer to that. But perhaps I I got a sense of you almost preparing for this (laughs) in your life. And perhaps the conversation is, is, you know, what do... What is it that I would like to be surrounded by in my final chapter? And also, I don't know is a good answer. (laughs) No, I don't think it is morbid. This is part of life. And and I think, you you know, death is part of life. And it's such a privilege to work with people when when we're going through the possessions of somebody who's died. Brilliant stories come up. And to be trusted with something like that is amazing. And actually, my parents died in the summer and my brother and I are going through their, their house at, at the moment. And that, it, 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 is, it is both fascinating and a little bit irritating, you know, because you just think, really, did you keep that? You know, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I've completely gone off topic. No, I don't think you have. I think there is, I think there is this bigger significance here. And that's what I think some of the, you know, it's not important today. It doesn't matter if it sits on my phone today, but some, in some undefined point in the future, like we are now in an era where we're so saturated with photos that we don't know what to do with them. So it's not like we have like a little, you know, um, packet of like a few Polaroids or a few you know, prints. And so actually it's quite an overwhelming thing. And I think it is important to just, as you go, know, know how you're dealing with it so that you don't end up having almost so much that you've got nothing, you know? Uh, absolutely. But also, I mean, environmentally, it's not good. It's, it's as not good as um, keeping, you know, as putting stuff into landfill, you know, there is a, a, a limit in the digital space. And, and um, I suppose, again, we're talking about systems. What, what system could you set up so that you can find your photographs with ease when you want to, when you're in your final chapter and you want to look back on your life? And also, do you still want to be encumbered with all that? You you know, the thing is that we don't know how we're going to feel in the future, do we? It's true, but I feel like books and books have that significance for a lot of people. For me, photos have that significance that they're you know, they almost transcend time and people would want those, you know, in future generations, they would want to see things and, you know, but how much would they want to see? And so as you've asked me that question, I almost think I want to go for the simplest answer is I've got two things. One is that I like to kind of favorite as I go and I make a second a day video each year and it kind of creates a seven, seven minute long video. That's one beautiful thing. And the other thing is that when I had the time, I would make like an annual album 
just one physical album. Uh, I'm I'm already a few years out of date because it's just got too busy. And I I think for me that is it represent you you you're forced to do a bit of a selection process already. There's already too many for the album, you know. So you're already forced to do that process. But by doing it, you then you create something physical, which I do think is helpful. Yeah. Uh, in this world where who knows what can happen to a piece of technology or whatever, like it's just yes. you know. So you create something physical, you do the thing, you can also revel in the process a little bit. There's something very reflective about doing it. And then you're kind of done. So, you know, yes, there are like social media where you can have some memories. I think sometimes people use it as a bit of a diary and things like that. I I, I do it for like kids' birthdays. I find it a little bit of a milestone piece. So that might be a third element. That's kind of my system. That's it. You've got I'm a done. system. You, yeah. you, you've just yeah. given your, you've, you've coached yourself. You're brilliant. You, you know what you're doing. You've got it. You're Amazing. there. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Well, it just helps to say it out loud. So thank you so much, Caroline. And to, I, I, you say I've coached myself, but actually you coach me here. Uh, I just talk a lot. That's all <laughs> when I'm being coached. Um, but thank you so much. That's, I think, a really nice practical way to end it on some specific troubleshooting challenges mm. um, but it's not a it's not a one-dimensional answer you give you give a very rich multi-layered way of looking at this stuff which I think is very powerful so thank, thank you so you. much and thank you for giving your time um, for three episodes I really appreciate it it's been a real pleasure uh, and again back to when we first met thank you for for paying attention to this crucial topic I'm I'm really grateful Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. I appreciate that. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lots of love. Thank you for listening to Life Work with Maya. If you've got to this point, I'm guessing you found it valuable. So do share the link with somebody else who can benefit. In an age of materialism and us trying to stay on top of clutter, what could be nicer than to send a non-clutter digital link to somebody and say, I listened to this and I thought you might love it. What a great way to show your care and consideration for them. If you haven't left a review, now is the time and make sure that you are subscribed on Spotify or you're following along on Apple Podcasts. And if you really want to help the show grow, then do share the link on IG stories, Instagram stories, or reshare or discuss your thoughts with my LinkedIn posts. You can find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. Do you feel free to send me messages there? I love having dialogue with my listeners um, and the links to those handles are in the show notes. Thanks for listening and I look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye-bye.